would just like charge his fucking car. Charge it. <laughs> that was one of the moments where I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. No, no, I was no, just like, no. Bang, charge, bang, charge. <laughs> this is episode three of Benita and the Barracas, The Payback. This one is all about money. But before we dive in, a quick reminder about the story behind this podcast. Baraka is Colombian slang for a resilient woman who's been through something difficult, but still stands strong. A Baraka is basically a badass. And after what I've been through, I am all about supporting badass women. If you don't already know my crazy story, it's a love story gone horribly wrong. I was engaged to this guy, a famous surgeon and scientist who turned out to be a pathological con man. The story is insane, and it's been told all over the world. Benita Alexander. Benita Alexander. Investigative producer. Who thought she'd be spending the rest of her life with Dr. Matt Greedy. It's been on ABC. I'm Whoopi Goldberg, and this is The Con. The Dr. Oz Show, the Dr. Death podcast, and I even made a film about it called He Lied About Everything. And now I'm talking about it in my own podcast. In this episode, my best friend Nancy joins me again. And I'll also be chatting with two other dear friends, Tia and Alfred. Alfred is not technically a Baraka, but in I'm the- I'm just acting like one. <laughs> so I'll embrace my feminine side for this interview. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm talking to my ride or dies, all the people that like live this whole crazy mess with me. And you, you're one of them. Yeah. Alfred used to own a Brooklyn hair salon, and that's where I first met him. I met Tia at a salon too, but our first interaction was uh, a little different. I think we should start with the way we met, which we always joke about. <laughs> Do we want to tell the story? Because on this, on this show, we're being real. I don't think they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> um, the short version is I had, I had come to a salon to get a spray tan because I was performing in a dance show. Mm -hmm. And they, they tell me that they have someone there that does waxes. I'm like, do you need a wax? I'm like, actually, I do. So they they ask you, right, if you yeah, if you can it, wax it. me. Yeah. And we if I remember, we go into this little, like, curtained area. Mm -hmm. And it was like, hi, hi. And it's always kind of weird when, you, when you're getting a wax, period. Yeah, but then, and I always tell the story to people. The funny thing was we're mid-wax, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, turn over. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And what? I think you said like doggy style. Get on your knees. And yeah, I was like, like doggy style. And I was like, excuse me. <laughs> like, girl, you know what that is. <laughs> I'm blushing even now, remembering it. <laughs> but we were laughing, yes. as we always laugh, yes. and I we just like hit it off. Mm -hmm. And then it's, it's just it's morphed history. into yeah. becoming really, really good friends. Yeah. Like everyone else, both Tia and Alfred were wowed when they first met my charming fiancé, the so-called super surgeon, Dr. Paolo Maccarini. And what really got them was his over-the-top romance. And he just came in like a, like a knight. Shining, Shining armor. armor. Yeah. And, On his white horse. Yeah, and, you know, take you all over the place and, you know, all the things. I was like, well, girl, I want some of that. <laughs> girl, uh, can you have him talk to my man, please? <laughs> The constant shower of rose petals and the over the top, everything was over the top. Always the best champagne, the best wine, the best hotel room, the best, like, everything was not just a surprise, but like, like, every scene was like out of a movie. Like, I literally felt like I was in a movie the whole time, like. So he doted on you. I mean, he doted on all your friends. Yeah. Do you remember like you would come over here and he would cook up a storm, right? Yeah, he cooked a whole meal for us uh, from scratch. And not just any meal, right? It yes. was like lobster and yes. I don't even remember what. And well plated. <laughs> presentation. Oh, like the presentation. Yes, yes, yeah. the presentation. Everything was very beautiful. Yes. Yeah. He was very gregarious and friendly and affable. Yes. And the life of the party and he loved to have fun and he loved to spoil everybody and he would pay the bill and he'd cook all these big things. He didn't come across as a bullshitter. No. I mean, he, he seemed like the real deal. Mm -hmm. 
one funny story. He knew that you you waxed mm -hmm. him. Italian. Yes. He was honestly looks. Yeah. He has a lot of hair, and he's a hairy yes. guy. And he wanted his ears and his nose waxed. Yes. And he kept saying, "But it's really hard to find someone that can do it right." And I kept saying, "Well." Why don't you ask Tia? Yeah. Ask Tia. And I th he finally, he, I think he, you were here and he I just was asked you. He just came out. He was like, do you think you could wax my ears and my hair, my nose? I was like, yeah, come on. <laughs> like, you know how I am. I'm like, yeah, come on, just sit down, like whatever. And I did it. And he was like, oh yeah, this is good. Like, you know, but he is hairy. Like the hair was like <laughs> busting out of the ear and the nose. I was like, bro, you just should have a trimmer on it. <laughs> You know, oh, that up. but he handed me like a fifty dollar bill or something like that. It was like here, you know, and I was like, don't worry about it. Benita's gonna, you know, out is on the house. He was like, no, here, like he was, he was yeah, exceedingly he was generous, very generous, yeah. very generous. When it came to our July eleventh, twenty fifteen wedding, and our plan to move to his house in Barcelona after we were married, Paulo's generosity was on overdrive. Do you remember he kept inviting everybody? Yeah, like, like well, you could come. Yeah, come yeah, visit. Yeah, because he invited, he was like, Tia, we'll fly you over. I was like. <laughs> yeah, take you out on my sales. Yeah, I was like, okay, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> so then, of course, there was, uh, for the wedding, there was this castle that he told you all you were staying in. Ugh, the castle. <laughs> I remember I remember when you, you told me and you called me, and I remember telling the kids, and my husband at the time and we were just all running around doing the happy dance we're like <laughs> we're going to a castle what are we gonna wear we're going to a castle you know right. and it was just like living you know living a different life it was like you know oh my god we're gonna experience something we've never experienced before you know and he and, said he was paying for it for everybody yes. for three days i mean that's not like hundreds of people to stay in this castle for yeah. three days. Yeah, it was crazy. I had no idea how much Paolo was spending on our wedding because he insisted on doing all the planning and surprising me with almost everything. But I knew it was a lot. Just money was just like yeah. pouring, you yeah. know, M money was raining. It wasn't, money was a non-issue. I mean, all the details were so everything was so extravagant right and so over the top and there were going to be fireworks on the lake after midnight and he'd gotten the most expensive restaurant exclusive restaurant in florence to cater the wedding well and, and i remember when i met him in new york he was whispering in my ear like all the things that he had planned that nobody oh, yeah. knew about there was going to be a horse and carriage involved it's nothing i've ever experienced before but i was just really happy for you because I knew you deserved that, you know, and it was like, it was a matter of um, just really enjoying to see somebody that you love and care about being bestowed and treated mm -hmm. that way. I was so happy for you. I was happy too. It really did feel like a fairy tale. So when I had to tell everybody that my generous Prince Charming was actually a fraud, and nothing about our wedding was real, it was one hell of a shock. It's hard to um, believe that somebody of that stature would try to con you. There was just no reason to doubt this guy at the no, beginning, to, no, right? No, no. Like, honestly, I would have never in a million years, like, I wouldn't have, yeah, no, not at all. And that's the scary part, honestly, because... I know, in hindsight, yeah, right? like, like, that he was acting the whole damn time. And it was genuine, like, damn, like... You I know, like, you're a good actor, like, mm -hmm. and the whole damn time you knew you were lying? Right. Like, huge lies. Yes. Like, he's he's still effing married, right. which means he could have never married me in the goddamn first, first place. place. It, it was so awful that it was stunning. You, you took it this far, so Very literally far. weeks before the wedding, yes. and people had were, had made plans, mm -hmm. had bought tickets, took off a of word, you know, everything. All, like everything. And you let it go that far, and you let me quit my job, yes. you let me pull Take. my child out of school, and you know the whole damn time that, that it's none of this is ever going to happen, happen, and it's all an, a lie. Like you're turning people's lives up upside, upside down. down. Like the slow intricate, very calculated, yes. really, yeah. weaving of this little web of lies. It's so sick. 
I always compare it to like a spider weaving, mm -hmm. weaving a web yes. of lies. Yes. Oh, oh yes. That's you know. a classic con man. Here, here's the other thing. Con, con men usually con you out of money. And he did not no, want exactly. money. Exactly. He was like exactly. spilling it. Right. So what was his real agenda? It's hard to know. I have no idea. It's hard to know. No idea. Money was not his thing. Money was not, whatever it was, it wasn't money. Well, it doesn't fit the, it doesn't fit the norm. It wasn't his motivation. So that's the thing, we, with most con men, most of these con men are after money. You know, a yeah. lot of these scams we hear about, you know, they're, they're whining and dining one woman with the money they took from another woman, or they're yeah. trying to get, they're always after money. And like this new show that's out, The Tinder Swindler, that everybody's all gaga about and talking right. about, and he's, he's a piece of work. This guy. Oh, I mean, God. He, yeah. He took millions and he, he, it was the same thing. He's stealing from one woman, whining and dining the next woman because that impresses the woman and she thinks he really is this, you know, the son of a billionaire diamond guy. Whatever, yeah. But with Paolo, that's what's so confusing, not just for me, for everybody. Yeah. So, and who knows what I, to this day, I don't know what his motive was, but, but once the gig was up, once once things started falling apart and I called off the wedding, that's mm -hmm. when it got interesting because then all of a sudden Mr. Generous didn't <laughs> care he about changed. the three hundred people that had spent three hundred plus people that had already spent money on plane tickets. Thousands or, of dollars, yeah. Thousands, you yeah. know, plane tickets, hotels, red carpet dresses and attire. And I remember Everything. saying to him, What about all these guests? What about all my friends and family and all the money they spent? Oh, when this is all blows over, you know, we'll we'll still get married and I'll fly everybody to Italy. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I knew the guy was lying through his teeth and I'm like, "Okay, yeah, sure." He started crying broke. Whatever. Yeah, so here here was the thing, even though he was surprising me with everything and he was paying for everything, there were a few things that I paid for. Number one was my dresses because I didn't want him to know anything about the dresses. I wanted to surprise him and he wanted to be surprised. So we agreed that I would pay for the dresses and then he would pay me back. I had no reason to believe he wouldn't pay me back based on the really? way he was spending money. And then the invitations, that was the only other thing that I was doing was to pick out the invitations. You know, he wanted a very elaborate invitation, but he said, just pay for it since it's in the U.S. and I'll pay you back. So between the invitations and all the dresses I needed for all the fancy events mm -hmm. and then some other things, plane tickets I purchased, you know, for mm -hmm. myself, some of the people in the wedding party. I was in it for about 50 grand, but all of a sudden, once the gig is up, oh, I'm broke. I'm broke. I had to, I had to, I had to reimburse the wedding caterer. He said he spent like $2 million, you know? I mean, I have this in text and in voicemails. And the crazy thing is at this point, I know the man is lying and he's te texting, woe is me. I'm so break broke. You know, I can't give you any money because, uh, you know, I got to pay the wedding caterer and I got to pay this person and that person. And I'm thinking, you fucking liar. Like, <laughs> No, I know I had already confirmed the caterer had never heard of him. There was no contract. There was none of these people. So now he's now he's broke. Fucker. Yeah. <laughs> I guess at that point it's like any con man that's caught, right? Now I'm now yeah. I'm not on the fantasy train, so now I'm no I'm yeah. no good to you. So that's where again it's like now you're bothersome. Now yeah. you're you're just annoying him because mm -hmm. you're now not succumbing to the plan. Yeah. yeah you're not fitting the mold so i had lost money um mm -hmm. and he didn't really right. seem to care this was my first little like okay i'm gonna get you back moment you know screw you you're claiming you're broken you spent millions of dollars I, I know you didn't spend a damn penny i was mad as hell this asshole was claiming he spent millions on a fake wedding that existed only in his sick head it was time for payback. I was here. Oh, yeah. Worst <laughs> All right. Well, so let's tell that one first. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. I was like, wait, don't we need paper towels? <laughs> yep. This is a story about paper towels and a whole lot of other stuff that you can buy online. So I kept press hammering him, hammering him. I'm like, I'm broke. I have no job. Oh, I'm right. a single mom. Like... And so at some point he had given me, I, and I said, if you don't have any cash, mm -hmm. give me a credit card that I can pay some things with, right. you know? And he had said yes. Yeah. And he gave me a credit card and told me to just tell him what I was using yeah, it for. Before. And in my head, I'm thinking, okay, well, I can't pay my private investigator with a credit card, obviously. I can't pay my mortgage, which was like the big thing. 
what can I, what can I do that, right. you know, makes sense. And I talked to my private investigator about it at the time. I'm like, okay, he gave me a credit card and he said, what did he say you could use it for? He said, I could use it for whatever you want, whatever I want. And the PI was like, okay. Go for it. <laughs> have fun. And so it was, I was in this interesting position of like, okay, I have this credit card. I want to get whatever I can get, but I can't, I have to be really careful. Oh, that's you know? where Tia came in. Yeah. I have to be really strategic. So one day I was talking to somebody and I said, I don't know what to do. And she's like, well, you can buy all kinds of stuff on Amazon. And it, the person will just get a receipt that says from Amazon. Amazon. It, won't, it won't say what you, what you bought. And so Tia was here um, at the house and I was like, Tia, we're going shopping. <laughs> and this is before COVID, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm literally on Amazon looking around the house like, okay, what do I need? Toilet paper. Mm -hmm. Let's order 40 rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> well, literally, right? Paper towels. Like, paper towels. Just, I was like, okay. wait, what about them disinfectant wipes? <laughs> yeah, let's get some of those. <laughs> so it wasn't, it was like under $1,000 total. It yeah. wasn't like I went nuts. nuts. But for, I think it was like three days in a row, the, the, yeah, the, the door, doorman. they kept the doorman, the bell kept ringing and I was like, you got another package, you got another package. Well, it's kind of survival mode. It was survival mode at that point. Yeah. And it's not that it was about revenge, but just like, you know, screw you. Yeah. So it was like household supplies, like toilet plate, paper, medicine, toothpaste, vitamins, you know, I don't know, cleaning supplies. And then school supplies for just like notebooks, pens, all this. I bought a little stack of reporter's notebooks and that was for me, for my investigative mission. And then there were some like funny and kind of fuck you items. I bought the blonde wig that I ended up wearing in Barcelona. I ordered that on his damn dime. Some sexy lingerie. <laughs> um, yeah. This perfume. He always, this is funny. There's this perfume that he wore and then I, f I fell in love with it. And then he started giving me the, the women's version of this perfume. Mm -hmm. He always claimed it was this fancy Russian impossible to get perfume. I, I mean, it, it, it's a beautiful perfume. Well, of course, now I find the perfume. And it's not so hard to find because I found it on Amazon. Now, it was yeah. not cheap. I want to say that one was like $750 or something. Um, wow. So I bought, I bought the perfume. Of course. Um, and then some gotta, real Got to be you. smelling good, you know? <laughs> My favorite fuck you items, which were more just for the fun of it. I bought a, a big box of condoms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm single now and you're going to help me case. out. Just Yeah, um, exactly. Some batteries for the, you know. The, for that. The goods. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. And I, I had to bring, I had piles of packages and I had so much fun opening those. And even with, with Jess, with my daughter, like I'm, we're opening the packages and we're, I'm high-fiving her and we're laughing. <laughs> and I, I remember saying to Jess right then, I said, this is how you take your power back, you know? Good for you. And he never said anything, you know? Yeah. I just texted him. I bought some stuff on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. So I was totally within my right to do it. So that was my first little kind of F you with the money. But then the big one <laughs> was, of course, in Barcelona. I had my little moment of shopping revenge on Amazon. But that was before I went to Barcelona and found out that my fiancé was hiding a whole other family in the house where we were supposed to live after our wedding. And once I saw that, it was game on. I knew I had this tiny window. The wheels were turning. I'm like, I'm thinking he still owes me so much money. And once I confront him, I know I'm not getting that money back, right? So exactly. what can I do? What can I do? So I called my private investigator and I'm rattling off what I'm crying, rattling off what just happened. I'm going to confront him and I need to know how I can get my money back. And he said, you still have his credit card, right? Exactly. And I said, yes. And he said, is there anything you can charge on it? Or is there someone who can, you know, charge From something States. on it and then give you the money? And I was like, mm, ding, 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 Tia. When Tia got the call from me, she was out shopping with her family. But it was a number that I didn't recognize right, I'm overseas. because you were overseas. And literally, when I picked up the phone, your voice, like literally, it pierced my heart because you were like, wailing in the phone well like it was just like it was really hurtful like it was just like I had to like walk away 
from my mom and my sister because I was like, what the F happened? And you were like, it's two effing children, it's a woman. Like you were telling, I was like, get like I'm like, uh, like I'm baffled and stunned hearing that. Like I was like, my friend is crushed right now. Like she is really crushed. He literally just took the knife, put it in your heart and twisted it. That was just, it was, it was, it was very emotional. It was very emotional, very hard. Um, and then, but then I had to kick in to. Because what did I say? What did I? What did I you say? You were just like charge his fucking car, charge it. <laughs> that was one of the moments where I'm like, oh no 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 no. Yeah. And so Tia was supposed to be doing all kinds of beauty stuff for the wedding. She was on the wedding website, and we actually did already owe Tia some money. So I called Tia, and I'm like, listen, this just happened start charging his card and just put wedding expenses. And T was like, what, you know, and she, how much? I said, charge 2000 and if it goes through, just keep going. No, it's you said five. I said five. You said charge 5000 and if it keeps going, just keeps charging it until you can't charge it's, it no more. Right. So that's what I did. And meanwhile, we're in McDonald's in Europe <laughs> and we're just like, it was almost like there was an auction. We're like, can you get 5000 5000 Do I hear 5000 All right, go for four, go for four. We... Oh. Okay, go three thirty five hundred. <laughs> no, I was just like, no. Bang charge, bang charge. If the charges did go through and Tia actually got cash, the plan was to pay her back for makeup supplies she'd already purchased for the wedding, and I'd keep the rest. But our little plan went kind of sideways. You didn't get very far, but you got a little ways, yeah. and then and then it you're like it stop. got cut off. Yeah, it was through um, Square and. Mm -hmm. Her account got blocked for a while and there was an investigation. And I thought for sure we'd never see this money. You know, there was just yeah. no way. She's probably like, bitch, I'm going to jail. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I know. Poor Tia, thank God, was not. I was. I felt so terrible. I put her through so much. But she's like, no, I fuck him, you know. And oh, my God. My Such a nightmare. But it was, like, but it was worth it. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but then it, it was about three months later. All of a sudden, Tia calls me one day. And she's like, you are not even going to believe it. The money just came through. So she got this big payment of cash. I'm like, oh, and we were both, uh, is it is a trick? Is it real? The money went through. Got a nice, so, a nice little chunk. Ha <laughs> Girl power. <laughs> Serious girl power. Yeah. So after wow. all these months, and it was at a time when I needed it so, so desperately. Yeah. I forget how much it was, but it was somewhere between 15 and 20 grand. He owed me more than that. You know, I was mm -hmm. just reclaiming some of what I, what I owed. I've never told the story before because I didn't want people to think that this. It was about that. Or, yeah, that it was about money or revenge yeah. because it wasn't. Well, you had to you had to recoup your loss because there was loss there, and that's a thing. So much loss. Like, yeah. Again, you know, it's it was. You had every right to do that. I don't think there was anything wrong with that. Can we? You know, and I've I asked, know. I asked the PI many times. I'm like, did we do anything legally wrong? He's like, no, he, he gave, gave you the power and he told yeah. you to charge whatever you yeah. want. And like, legally, no. Yeah. But I was still like, for a long time, afraid no, to tell the story. It's because, crazy because. And I also didn't want people to think the wrong thing that I was, because it wasn't about F you, I'm after your money. It no, was just like, getting back. this what? is my last yeah. chance to recoup, you yeah. know, anything. For anybody to think that you did this for money, they're buttholes i wouldn't even you know like i wouldn't even entertain well, this is one of the things that comes up from the trolls right oh you're just a gold digger and you you were pissed because you were you were jet setting all over the world and now you didn't have that you were jet setting before you met his ass it's not like you never been anywhere like you weren't a cultured woman you weren't you know you weren't educated you know Look, you was already fabulous so like <laughs> speaking of money yeah i got my little payback but those internet rumors about me rolling in cash are so wrong. Because I, I heard somewhere someone says you're like a multimillionaire. <laughs> I'm like, well, damn, bitch, I'm your ride or die. What up? <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? You know? I know. Yeah, can I, I, I see no, come on, <laughs> I know. There's, a, there's an article. Yeah. There is an article out there that says my net worth is fifteen million dollars. I'm yeah, like, where, yeah, where's yeah. it? Where is it? Where, where, yeah, where is it hiding? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know yeah. where these millions Shit. are.
Rank yeah. me off a piece of that. Yeah, yeah bop, seriously. Bop. And, and, but I'm I what? and this but this gets reprinted and reprinted and I'm think and I can't get it off the internet. And now I wonder how much money Paolo really had. Sure, he was a real doctor. He wasn't faking that. But he's cut from the exact same lying cloth as that sleazy con man at the center of the hit Netflix documentary, The Tinder Swindler. He presented like he had all this money, right? Yeah. He was lavishing everybody, so generous. Now I kind of wonder if he really did have any money, you know, yeah. um, or where at least the money was coming from. And exactly. I think I can't prove this, and I don't know this for sure, but a lot of times he used this Russian credit card to pay for things. He, and he had a grant in Russia. He was doing a clinical trial in Russia. So now I'm thinking, did the Russian government fund half of our vacations and half of the gifts and or yeah. all of it? Which is, if that's the case, if he was using what was supposed to be research money, money. for science and clinical trials, not only is that disgusting, yeah, but also that is very similar to what, what these other con men do. And the Tinder, Tinder swindler guy did. They're Stealing money from one place in order to fund, you know, this lifestyle that this fantasy lifestyle that they don't really have, then that that they aren't really that person. I mean, it's just fraudulent on on all levels. To this day, my friends are still furious about all of this. Obviously, I was hurt for you, but I was more pissed. Like... I wanted to, you know, get some goons on his ass. <laughs> I'm curious, if he was sitting where I am right now, what would you say to him? You're a little piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, I, I would probably ask him, like, how can you be so comfortable just lying like that? To everyone. You who, know? who are you? Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. Who exactly. the F are you? Exactly. Yeah. And you know, maybe, like, what to punch him in the face. Good. <laughs> yeah, that. he deserves it. Yeah, he deserves it. I do that for yeah. me. Which also brings up the question of why, why he picked me, why he thinks he's going to get away with lying to me. I mean, even though I was in this, admittedly, in this love haze. Because he thought he was going to have you digmatized. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. Whew, all I can say to that one is thank you to my amazing friends for laughing through all of this with me and getting me through it. So on the next episode, I will be breaking down all the reasons that I believe this man's lies. There were a lot of reasons, trust me. Like meeting his mother in Italy. He flew me and my daughter to Italy. We went to his mother's house. She cooked us homemade meals. She opened photo albums for us. I mean, come on. he flies you he to took Italy. you home to his mother. And there are so many things like that. So that's coming up on the next episode. Wow. But for tonight and for this episode, Nancy, I'll let you wrap this one up. Thank you all for listening and watching. And we wish you love and peace and be kind to one another. And we're signing off, Benita and the Barracas. <laughs> Thank you, Nance. Love you. Love you too, baby. Bye. Bye.